Ladies and gentlemen, we are set for the next bout of the evening. It is scheduled for 10 free minute rounds of professional lightweight boxing. It is sponsored by Great Wall Motors. I right, just take a look at the tail of the tape. Uh, Camille Barr is taller, he's heavier, he's four years older, and he has a longer reach. So everything is going his way. You see the records, very similar. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, this bout is scheduled for 10 three minute rounds of professional lightweight boxing. It is sponsored by Great Wall Motors. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner. He enters the ring wearing red trunks with black trim. He weighed in at 61 kgs or 134.4 pounds. He hails from Wherribee, Victoria, Australia. A former Victorian state lightweight champion. SUV coming soon to New Zealand via Great Wall Motors. Scoring 10 point must scoring system, no standing eight count. There's no three knockdown rule. But it cannot be saved by the bell in any round. Only the referee can stop the fight. This is scheduled for 10 rounds. Interesting. Cambosis is usually the trash talk, but Bell is right up there and in his mug. Bella comes flying off his stool. South Force, too. He's in the red trunks, and uh, he's going right at him. He said he's the best red-headed fighter in the world. You know who he's comparing himself to his fighting this weekend. <laughs> There's another uh, very famous father who'll be watching that fight closely. That's right. Cambosis head on the chest there. Just a little bit of sparring by these young rutting bulls. Justin Fortune fighters, uh, they're, they're tough guys. They're out of the fennec mold. This guy, uh, Bella, he's, uh, like I said, he's got that Albanian heritage and he's mighty proud of it and all kinds of members of his family of fighters. He doesn't look like a fighter. He's got that uh, great gentle look like Jeff Horn, but he's a tiger when he comes to the ring. As is the Hornet, Jeff Horn. Physically, he's uh, extremely well conditioned. He's got striations on striations. Got to say, so far, Cambosis, he hasn't been pulled into it. He's remained pretty calm. Hasn't got uh, pulled into any of the sight job that Bella's trying to do. He eats a straight left hand, though. Bella's really tough. Look at the way he throws him around. Kind of pouring, but at that time, he bops him with a jab. He doesn't look, but the, you mentioned about the striated muscles, and that's exactly what it takes to be a good fighter, and he's got that. That's the long, thin muscles, I suppose, the big, bulky muscles. Not to say that uh, Anthony Josh with bulky muscles wasn't successful a week ago. He's having some success with that uh, southpaw stance. Now, Bella doesn't always fight southpaw, but uh, he's landed the straight left on a number of occasions. He's been strictly southpaw on this one so far, which... May or may not be confusing Cambosis. Nice little counter right hook as well. Slipped the right hand and just slotted the counter right hook over the top. Nice movement all the way by Bella. Bounces to his right now, slides around to the left, hands up and down, and he gets, uh, has to pay the price as the hands were coming down because Cambosis timed the left hook. And that was a uh, classic case of just getting caught when you're switching stance. Cambosis will feel much more comfortable if Bella is the righty. You know, you suggested a couple of fights ago. Oh, nice uppercut. Cambosis caught him with that, and it kind of starched Bella. That got his attention. The hands come down a bit now. 
That's a money punch from Cambosis. He throws it very well and very quickly. Well, he caught him with that, and another upper cut on the inside again. This is just round number one with about 12 seconds to go. Very nice action fight so far. Only two nice punches led by Cambosis were the uppercuts, but they were nice, solid punches. Otherwise, on aggressiveness and the amount of punches landed, probably going to be Bella. Well, Bella certainly pushed the pace. He landed straight lefts early. Cambosis, a couple of nice crisp uppercuts and that left hook catching. Bella changing stance, but I think Bella will narrowly edge that first round. Well, you take a look at the guys. We want to thank Duco supporters, Georgie Calvin, Barry Galbraith, the Mad Butcher, Peter Leach, and Mike Morton, Glenn Moore, Greg McKelman, and our friend Dave Cameron. Not feeling too well, Dave. You couldn't be here, so we wish you a speedy recovery. Missed you at the way in. Of course, uh, if we move to the replay, go ahead, Mike. Well, he was pretty much out of the tracks. So I think that was a 100 meter sprint. Stayed in Southpaw for most of that round and uh, caught Bella with a number of those stinging straight lefts. Second caught Cambosis, round rather. Two. And that was the uppercut late in the round. And that is a money punch for Cambosis. It's, some, it's a shot he throws particularly oh, well. And he slips the left hand well, too. Okay, here we go with round number two here. We're at the Vodafone Event Center in Manico City. I'm the Colonel Bob Sheridan, along with Mike Gango, Money Beatham, and, uh, of course, Stephen McGyver. Bella's quick with that left hand, because uh, Cambosis is trying to set him to, to either slip or pull the left hand, and uh, Bella's just beating him to the punch there. He's breaking his rhythm and managing to land that quite nicely straight. Look at the way he moves his hands around, doing anything he can to distract uh, Cambosis. And Cambosis is not buying into it so far. Cambosis okay. managed right, to right, slip out on the outside of that. Be careful with that low blow, George. Good referee, too. Oh, he's Very a great clear. referee. He's real clear. He gives real... He's not a, a, a real large man, but he can handle. I've seen him handle heavyweights because his directions are so, are so clear. We're talking about uh, Dan Rex Tapdedsen, one of the very best referees in the world from the Philippines. There, the Cambosis was waiting for Bella just to drift in. He drifted to his to his left, and Cambosis was waiting for that and nailed him with the right hand. George picking it up a little bit here, trying to anyway with body shots. He's up on his toes. Both of these guys in tremendous physical condition. Okay, work inside. A couple of pouring left hands there from work Bella. Inside. Don't hold him. But, uh, nothing on it. Bella's got that real confident look in his face. No like he no knows punch. exactly okay. what he's doing yes, in there, no. knows what he wants to do in there. Sometimes when guys are undefeated, they don't know how to lose and don't know what it means to even lose a round. I get that feeling with the Bella right now. But Cambosa's has got some power too. Good body shot that time. Notice how he, he went downstairs with a stiff jab to the body and then came straight up with a nice slapping left hook. Oh, just grazed his chin, did uh, Cambosis with that uppercut. A straight right hand, got Bella. That Bella is him. down on his heels now. He sees trying to fight forward, but he had clipped pretty good with that last shot. His eyes are blinking. Look at his knees, uh, a little bit loose in the knees. <laughs> he tries to pick it up by doing a bit of a shuffle there. And you were right about that uppercut of Cambosis, Mike. He's got a good uppercut. Well, Cambosis is much more comfortable. As soon as, as soon as Bella switches into a conventional stance, Cambosis starts to get into his rhythm and he uses his speed advantage. Although uh, Bella just needs to be cautious here. He's slipping with his hand down, and now Cambosis is starting to try and hook the right hand. Well, he's into his second win right now. Is, uh, well, I was just going to say he switched back to Orthodox, and now Bella's back southpaw again. And walked into that uppercut again. Cambosis can be lethal with that uppercut. He catches you. Don't forget, in his uh, 11 victories, he gets six knockouts, and the uppercut has played a role in all his knockout wins. He, you can see him sitting for it now, too. He's, he's waiting. That was a nice slapping right hook. Bang, bang. That's a tough round to score, man. How, who did you like in that, Mike? I'm oh, going to lean to you on that. I'll have to go to Cambosis. He, he rocked, I thought, Bella with that, uh, that right hand that caught him. Yeah, and when I saw the legs go, that uh, gave me enough to go that way as well. By the way, the WBA world champion at lightweight, as you take a look at this replay, is Jorge Linares. 
from Venezuela. Go ahead, Mike. There was that uh, that right hand that set him back on his heels, and uh, I think he just got sparked momentarily there. Cambosis warming into his work nicely. He's been very, very calm so far, despite the frenetic start from Bella. WBC lightweight champ is Mikey Garcia from the USA. The IBF champ is Luke Easter, or rather Robert Easter Jr. from the USA, and the WBO champ. And I know Terry's watching is Terry Flanagan from the UK. Cambosis off is still. And uh, he's pretty intense. So is Bella. He's waiting for him. That's the one thing about these lighter weights is uh, you're never wanting for action. Now, well, not in this fight because these guys have uh, no personal uh, admiration for each other. Let's put it that way. So another way of saying they don't like each other. Cambosis doing some nice work there. Pouring with the right hand and getting himself back out into center ring. Cambosis again in the white trunks with the blue trim on him, white shoes, and uh, Bella, of course, in the red trunks. Some nice little sort of subtleties of skill in terms of just moving the head there, moving around. Cambosis actually took the left hand there and then came with the, the right uppercut. I don't think he's got a huge amount of respect for the power of Bella. Now, Bella now getting squared up, and uh, Cambosis comes right after him. You don't want to try and show a guy up, let a sleeping dog lie, especially the way these guys uh, don't like each other. A lot of good work there. See the, the, the tying up of the arms, they're trying to get the arms free to, to get those short shots to the body. Bella came roaring off his stool in round one, and he hasn't stopped coming forward since. At one stage, Cambosis caught him in the second round with a nice uppercut, a solid enough one to, I thought, starch out the legs of Bella, and that's where the fight stands uh, dead even. We get Cambosis the second round and Bella the first round. And with uh, this one about halfway through the third round and this scheduled 10 round affair, it's about even. Here he is back right handed. You don't want to get caught in the switch either. You got to be quick about it if you're going to do it. You got to switch out of range or you've got to switch when your opponent's on the back foot. And uh, Bella's just been caught doing that a couple of times. It's, uh, I think he, he's more kind of comfortable as a conventional fighter, but. Cam Cambosis, I think, is more comfortable with him as a conventional fighter. I, I agree with you totally, Mike. He likes him as a conventional fighter. And he's drifting again into the right hand there. I'd like to see Cambosis just hook a long right hand as Bella drifts rather than go for that uppercut too often. A lot of movement, almost nervous energy of uh, Camille Bella. You know, moving the hands around a lot. He's not throwing as many punches. He's a little bit bruised underneath the left eye. Cambosis is all business, and, and Bella is kind of an annoying sort of guy to fight, but a great guy to watch. He's an action fighter. If I was in there with him, I just want to, oh, he got clipped with the left hand that time. Same combination he used in the first round, jab to the body, then left hook to the head. What Cambosis needs to do when he throws that left hand, and he did it that time, through the three-punch combination, left hand, right hand, left hand, didn't quite catch him. And they exchanged right hands that time. Bella nailed him pretty good. Cambosis is drawing Bella in. He took half a step back there and then and popped him with that, that uppercut. I'd like to see him do the same with a draw right hand and, and pop it through straight. Just give him a little bit more range, a little less of a high risk shot. He's trying to time it again. Couldn't get inside the left hand of Bella. Oh, well, I think Cambosis won that second round. I think he landed heavier blows. Are you with me on that, Mike? Yeah, that's the third round, and I think uh, two and three go to Cambosis. Round one to Bella. This is a 10-round fight, of course. It is a marathon. It's not a sprint. The energy that Bella has is unbelievable. Yeah, the, the composure and the intensity of Cambosis has matched it. He didn't get caught out. He didn't panic. Didn't worry about losing that first round. He's just stuck to the game plan. Sky CEO John Follett. I haven't seen John tonight, but I know he loves this. There's that uppercut there from Cambosis and jab to the body, left hook to the head. Next time he throws that, expect the right hand to follow. Yeah. He really rocked him with that left hand. Boom. Inside, he throws that uppercut very, very quickly. Fortunately, Bella is looping his right hand, which enables the uppercut to beat it to the punch. We get ready to go to round number four, sponsored by the Great Wall Motors. Glad that you could be with us. This is scheduled for 10, and it's been an action-packed fight since the very get-go when Camille Bella came flying off his stool. These two uh, Aussie fighters 
no love lost and they're putting on a great show here so wherever you're watching in uh, Australia hope you're enjoying this one get a huge one coming up in Australia on July 2nd Manny Pacquiao and Jeff my pal Jeff Horn the Hornet what a superb job Duco have done to make that fight happen that right hand just whistled past the ear of Bella I know both of the, these fighters uh, Dean Lonergan has been working over there getting that fight organized and they're both terrific guys but I know the family of uh, Horn a lot better so I got to watch myself when I'm calling that fight <laughs> good work of uh, just nullifying Cambosis on the inside from Bella there again Bella uh, fighting as a southpaw getting a little squared up he wants to turn back to the right hand staying southpaw right now and Cambosis you know just waiting let him come in let's see what he's going to do he doesn't wait any longer he attacks with that right hand of his own Bella I'd just like to see him move to his right a little bit more when he's uh, working as a southpaw because uh, Cambosis is just finding a rhythm and Cambosis is quite happy to slip the left hand and I think he's started to get a beat on it again Cambosis in the white trunks with the blue trim front and back in the red trunks is uh, Camille Bella you see Bella's throwing a, doing a lot of movement making a lot of movement but I'm not sure it's effective as fakes it's make, not making Cambosis react you've got to have your movement be constructive so true Mike so true uh, he's got what, what I call a round or so ago nervous energy but it's you know the not faints to getting this guy to move he walked right into a right hand that time clean pair of whiskers I took it on the button uppercut partially smothered different look in the eye now of Bella he knows he's in a fight still forcing the fight still coming forward he doesn't like to take a step back and uh, on the other hand Cambosis is you know settled into just boxing this guy very very well he was patient because he was smothered in the first round by Bella's activity and he's just settled into sitting down on hard punches right now Cambosis yep. short with his jab and as you see there Cambosis is not short with his right hand well, Cambosis did something that you often need to do against the South he, he He threw a step over right hand and then he hooked his right hand. So he doubled up on it and hooked it. And it's a, again, it's a little confusing for a South but it is a technique that works. And, uh, a, way to, a way to beat that South is that straight right hand down the middle. And that's exactly what Cambosis is landing. He's landing into the chest. You always want to get a piece of him when you throw that right hand. See, so he just a piece. He was counted a little bit by Bella, but Cambosis is getting the right idea. I think that round. It was a bit closer round, I, I, I think. It was closer, Mike, but I, I do you, you think uh, uh, Bella did enough to win? I, I still favor Cambosis. Yeah. I, I, I think he was cleaner with the shots and uh, more definitive. I, I also think he he showed the better ring craft, particularly on the inside as well. Bella, though, it depends on what the judges yeah, like. They may nice. like Bella's energy in coming forward in those close rounds. Huh? Well, Ian Scott, John Conway, and Baez Khan are the judges in this fight. Mostly tonight, the judges have been with us, Mike. I need more jabs. You're faster. You're feeling over tight. So step it up another level. Let's fucking work it out. Oh, you're faster. It's uh, quite clear he has a speed advantage, and he wants him to step it up another level. Second time for round five. Four rounds of ten. I want to thank the Duco staff, Joe Sullivan. Joe O'Sullivan, Janelle Colcutt, Chrissy V, and Nikki Wall for all that. And of course, our Vice President of Communications for Duco, Craig Stenaway, for all the help getting us ready to call his fight. We thank you one and all. This is round number five. Go ahead, Mike. Just say, Cam Bosis has been very got a left hand there, but watch his work on the inside with the arms, tying up, putting his forearms under the armpit, creating room when he wants it, and shutting Bella down when he doesn't want to engage on the inside. Bella continues with the nervous energy, the hands up in the air, back down, dropping the left hand. And this is when Kebosis can sit down on his right hand. Instead, he goes hunting downstairs to the body left hand. Very disciplined fighter. These guys don't like each other, which, you know, I saw them at the weigh-in yesterday, and they don't like each other, for I, real. I don't think George Kebosis likes anyone, to be honest. Anyone who's standing in front of him, he has a good degree of disdain. Nice rip to the body yeah, there. Good rip is right. And, he, you know, not only is he back in the fight, he's ahead in the fight. If our score sheets are accurate in any way. Let him go, let him go. He can punch inside. See, see, work. see the work there from Cambosis on the inside. He trapped him against the ropes. He created an angle, threw a couple of shots, ignored the referee when he said let him go. 
and uh, he got the better of that exchange. Like jab. Boy, I, you know, I watched this uh, Dan Rex, and I don't want to be late with the point, but he's a great referee. He's right on top of it. He knows when to let them, when they're a little bit tied up, let them go. And he knows immediately, and he's quick getting in there to stop them when they need to be separated. Nice straight left hand gets through, but no zip on it from the left hand of Bella. And, and that's the thing, he needs to get Cambosis' respect with something a little bit hard. Otherwise, Cambosis is going to start doing what he did before, which is to eat that left hand or just pull it slightly and then counter. Oh, Cambosis is now coming with a straight left hand and then hook off it. We haven't seen a lot of jabs from Cambosis, but that's probably a function of Bella being in the southpaw stance for a lot of the fight. And Bella trying to invite him in. Let's go. He's missing a lot of punches. Nice. Bella, Bella's not as accurate, and he was near as accurate as he was in the early going. Cambosis has just got his rhythm, but he, he's creating some nice angles there as well when he changes off 90 degrees. Now here he is back. Orthodox is uh, Bella. Let's see how long he stays fighting as a right-handed fighter jabbing with his left hand. He's very puffy below both eyes right now. Neither fight has been down. Nobody really shaking. There was one couple of rounds ago that I thought uh, Bella's uh, heels get very heavy for a second and loosen the knees. But other than that, pretty even. Cambosis is just starting to make his jab work now. Bella's switched to conventional. You're right too, Mike. He, he's, he's more successful when he's right-handed. On the inside, he's pummeling the body of uh, Bella. His head on the chest. Not allowing Bella to dip down and put his shoulders to one side to create room to punch. And that's why I like this referee, letting him fight on the inside. Those are hard body shots. You, you see what Cambosis did though? He, he showed with his shoulders, he shaked with his shoulders, he faked. That got Bella to react, which opened up the body shots for him. And that's the difference between all the, well, again, what I've described as nervous energy of uh, Bella. That's his style of fighting. Cambosis, when he makes a move or a fake, He's moving Bella, and it's much more successful. Very clear right in the corner, too. Get that jab combination. Push him back, George. He's gassed. Try to see it. Ball fucks. Try to stop making him work. Make him work. Make him work. We're able to move on. You understand me? Set up your shots. Be smart. That's just a fortune given the information to George. There's a lot of boxing knowledge inside of Justin Fortune's head. He's probably forgotten more than what most people know. Very, very astute guy and a great friend. Seconds out for round One thing six. I've noticed too, Bella's got very high cheekbones. So it'll be interesting to see as the fight progresses if his eyes swell up. Round six. Well, he's he's swollen up, but he's swollen kind of like below the eyes, and beside the cheekbone almost. Which may make him vulnerable to cutting, but at least that's below the eye. Now he's starting to fake a little more. Perhaps he's been listening to the commentary. Yeah, he's trying to, now he's fainting, he's trying to make, but he's also fighting orthodox now. Yeah. He came out as a southpaw and fought almost the entire first round as a southpaw and spent more time, if you timed out southpaw to orthodox as a southpaw, he finished up the last round as a right-handed fighter when he's starting this as a right-handed fighter. That is, he's jabbing with his left hand. The jab gets through. I think he's more of a more of a counter fighter when he's uh, fighting conventional. He's certainly more aggressive when he's southpaw. That just may be the rhythm of the fight. But there's a great rhythm to the fight. I mean, here we are in the just starting the second half of the fight. We're in the sixth round, and it's still been an action-packed fight throughout, including the sixth round. This Cambos is landing his jab again. Well, Bella's also landed a couple of jabs as well. And he's, his defense is better as a, as a righty. As long as he's uh, not being over aggressive. Now, let's see how he goes when he switches. And he's back southpaw, so look for the right hand of Cambosis. Boring point. Bam! He lets the right hand go. Pull well, the did... trigger on that, but didn't quite catch him before. He didn't let uh, Bella get. Uh, a good lead or win the, the lead hand battle there. He tapped down and banged the right hand down the tubes. And again, when you're fighting a southpaw, he goes with a couple of almost speed bag punches to get him up. Now he's got him in the corner to see if he can pound him to the body. And Dan Rex lets him go inside. He just said, watch the heads. Good strength inside from Cambosis. Missed that uppercut, but uh, it had bad intentions. I have an accidental head up. Accidental headbutt. Uh, Dan, Rex, Dan Rex has just called an accidental headbutt. 
And that's important because it's after four Stop. rounds. So if the fight was stopped because of an accidental headbutt, the it would actually go to the scorecards. Well, this is a great example of a great referee. Very clear about it immediately. Camille, go there. Go there. Accidental headbutt. Accidental. And that's something that often happens too with uh, with southpaw right handers. And that's a that's a decent cut. It's a couple of centimeters. Hopefully the cut man can do a job on that between rounds. 40 seconds to go. Round six continues. And let's see if they can take advantage of it. The thing is now, the guy that's cut is Cambosis, and according to our score sheet, we've got him in front. Ironically, it's been a bit around for Bella as well. Got to watch when he switches and drifts short along the ropes. Cambosis is setting him. Uh, that time they exchanged left hands. Fighting from the uh, orthodox style again is Bella. She's, she's an entertaining fighter to watch. I love watching this kid fight. And Cambosis is so tough, so disciplined in this fight, and this guy came roaring out. Well, you're going to see how that cut is to the left eye. Well, that's a close round. I still think Cambosis edged it, but the judges, there could be a swing round for judges. Not for me. I think Cambosis won that round of my score, G. But I'm not scoring the fight. Let's have a look at that. Folks at home. Let's have a look at what they do with that cut. If you put pressure on, he won't fucking fall. There's that straight left of Cambosis. Wonder if they caught the uh, head clash there. Good strength on the inside from Cambosis as well. And that's a step over right hand, something we often see there from Russian go. fighters. Is that uh, right in there. Beautiful job by a camera, guys. I'll tell you, our producer tonight is Rob Quinn, our director is Matt Quinn. And all seven. our guys, super, super job catching that stuff for us. Not so much for us, but for the audience watching around the world. And the referee Five, right seven. on top of it. He called it immediately. It's a very good job. Whenever I go to the conventions around the world, I always like to go to the referee and judges clinic, and I always speak to them as a broadcaster. Please let us know. In the case of Dan Rex, who I've been to several conventions, it's just so perfect. Straight left hand gets loose, moves Cambosis back, and he's got Cambosis in front of him, does he? No, Dan Rex takes plenty of time to make sure he's okay. Cambosis might be in a little bit of trouble here. I don't know. Well, Bella can load up that left hand. He has got a bit of sting on him. He's certainly got a bit more energy now. He's a lot more energy right now. Bella might have got him in a little bit of trouble. I think he's back right now. But Bella lit him up. There's that counter uppercut. He needs to keep sting on that left hand. He can't just probe with it because uh, Cambosis will counter it. If it doesn't have a bit of punch on it, Cambosis will look to counter. Round number seven. This is brought to you by Great Wall Motors. Thank you for all the sponsors to keep this fight uh, in action here in Auckland, New Zealand. The left hook is there for Cambosis if he sets it up. Landed it three or four times. Now he's on his side. Nice turn. His eyes are clear, hands are up, and he's punching in between. Bella had his moments in the early going, and right now Cambosis is all the way back and pummeling Bella. Nobody has dropped yet. Hopper got lands. Nothing on those punches of Bella. He's just, got no pop at all. Just shoe shine punches, straight right hand, pops the head back. Left hook just grazes the chin. Nice work though from Cambosis the way he changed angles. With a right hand and almost staggered it. I wonder if Cambosis is just feeling the, uh, the the pace a little. His face is a mask of claret. Yeah, the blood is all over the place right now. It's, and it's really streaming down his face. It's not just all over the place. It's really bleeding.